Let's look now at finding function values based on a graph. So I have here a function pulled up. This is the function x squared minus 5. And I want to show you what's happening when we are evaluating a function, graphically what's going on. We've already done it algebraically. Here I have the, the number 3 for, for my x value. If I plug in the number 3 for x, that gives me 4 for a y value. So if I come over here and I put 3 squared, which would be 9, minus 5, I get 4. So algebraically I know that that's the case, but graphically what's going on is when I uh, put a number in for x, the y value I get out is the corresponding value of the ordered pair associated with those numbers on the graph. So if I were to move this Let's say I move it, oops, it's too far. Let's say I move it over here. You can see that by changing the value of x, I'm changing the, the value of y, which is it, to say that I am uh, finding different ordered pairs along this graph. So let's look at this example then together. I want to use the graph that's given over here to evaluate the function for different values or at different places. So the first one I'm looking at says, well, what is the value of the function when I let x be negative 2? So on the x-axis, I'm going to go find negative 2, and I'm going to slide up to the, um, to the function and find out where, where is that point on the graph. And that is occurring at positive 1. So when x is negative 2, the y value is positive 1. Because when we evaluate a function for a number, we are looking at the ordered pair that it forms on the graph. How about when x is 10? If x is 10, we can look here along the x-axis, and I can tell you that I'm not, I don't have a graph that goes out to 10 on the x-axis. But what do you notice about this portion of the graph? See that arrow right there indicating that this line is just going to keep right on going all the way to infinity? Well, if I were to put the num a hash mark over here for 10 on the x-axis, that would tell me that the corresponding ordered pair or the corresponding y value would occur at negative 2 because all values as we move off to infinity, all y values as we move off to infinity are occurring at negative 2. So this is a negative 2. What if I went backwards? What if I said, what is the x value going to be if y is negative 1? Remember, we're really just talking about ordered pairs. So if I have a negative 1 on this graph, on my function, the blue line here, what's the corresponding x value? So I'm going to go to negative 1. I'm going to negative 1 on the y-axis, which is right here. And I want to figure out what the corresponding y value, uh, x value would be if I had, there we go. What, that's the corresponding x value. So if I go down to negative 1 on the y-axis and I slide over to my graph, that occurs, the corresponding x value would be at positive 1. So for what value of x is g of x equal to negative 1? Well, that's occurring at positive 1. And that's how I want you to make sure that you understand that there is a corresponding uh, algebraically we can find it and graphically we can find it.